why is it not focused? Oh, there we go. Hello, good morning. I am getting ready to head out um, to two important appointments today. <laughs> Disclaimer, I'm going to kind of re show my um, stitches and I'll talk through my stitches. So if it makes you uncomfortable, maybe skip or I don't know. I'm not sure. Listen to it like it's a podcast and not like look at what's happening. Uh, but just heads up, it's going to be out. And I actually prefer when it's out because when I put cream, it just, I just don't want things covering it like the, the antibiotic ointment that I have to put. But also it's uncomfortable when fabric touches it. I'm going to actually put something over my sports bra today. But for now, I'm just going to talk with that covering, covering it up. So that's what it looks like at the moment. I think I'd mentioned this to you before, but it's um, it's a little bit longer than what was there previously because he had to go in and um, just try and rectify what was done before. So as I was saying, I have two important appointments today. First is to deal with this and take out the stitches. The second, which I am um, equally, as equally excited for, I was gonna say more excited, but I think both of these feel pretty like big for me today but the second is with my financial advisor and we're just gonna sit down and go through just my goals and have an honest discussion about the things that worked and the things that didn't work <laughs> and where where things are now um, I will ask him what is the best thing to leave in the description box in case anyone's interested he his company is also the one that kind of handles my all my insurances home car life health for me for my family like i i just i i think they do such a good job and the person i was even telling patricia about this the other day but the person the person who i deal with when it comes to like my insurance especially is so on top of things like he's just so so lovely um would highly highly recommend anyway i'm excited to go and and just touch base and see if I can kind of cross off one of the things that I've had on my list for a long time now and ask for his opinion about like something I, I want to get maybe early next year and just like work through if that's a smart decision or not. Um, but I just really like he's he's someone I met actually while I was filming my show um, on NTV and he's someone I interviewed for the show and afterwards I was like, oh, you must only speak to people who are like dollar millionaires and he was like mm, no and dollar millionaires start from somewhere so like no come to my office and we'll have this conversation um and yeah someone i would highly recommend if you are looking to like just be serious about your money makes like big investments like um he's given like of, of course like so many times he's given me like antidotes on, on like or just kind of given me an overview of certain projects he's been a part of and just to kind of encourage me and I find it so fascinating. Money talk, woo, child, I love some money talk. I really do enjoy like just conversations around wealth creation and financial stability and security and and now I'm, I'm kind of opening up to the idea of generational wealth and creating that i've never been that kind of person and maybe you guys can like we can talk about it in the comments i'd love to hear what you think but i've never felt that my parents owe me anything i've genuine first of all they've never raised me like that but also we've gone through so many ups and downs that i had no like this isn't the hiltons okay i don't there's no like in like crazy fortune that i'm like oh my life is sorted it's not quite like that they've really worked hard for what they have but just like many people they've had their ups and downs and i think i've never been disillusioned into thinking that what's theirs is mine but i also just don't see it like that i don't so even if they were good and like everything was perfect and it was just like money flying off everywhere i wouldn't be sitting here thinking oh I, my life is sorted and because of that i think i've also not necessarily thought that whatever i create whatever i make whatever i earn has to be something that i pass on to my family my little one i i i just i don't i i do want to do my best to provide the best life i could possibly provide in this moment but i don't feel or i've never felt uh before that 
I've never felt a responsibility to create this immense wealth just so that my daughter, my grandchildren, my great great grandchildren, like lines to come, don't have to worry. I, I, I've never put that pressure on myself. And that's been cool. Like, you know, do for me, I really do believe as long as I can provide you with the best life I possibly can for as long as I can, then I think I've done my part. And I don't feel, I don't want to add that pressure. Anyway, I've just, I've already explained myself here. So that's, that's where I've, I've, I've stood. And it's how I feel also about my parents. Like, enjoy your life, enjoy your money, enjoy your things. Like, it's not for me to be like, <laughs> when am I getting that car? What about that piece of land? Mm -mm, I don't know. So, so the other day though, I don't know what I listened. Oh, I may have like, I may have watched Adrian's uh, YouTube video. You know how Adrian Bailon, Bailon, Adrian from The Real has a YouTube channel. So she talked about generational wealth with her sister. And as someone who's kind of been interested in finances and has just taken in almost all kinds of videos and conversations around this for years, for some reason, this is the first time that I thought, wait a second, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice if even in this moment I was like I knew I was working not from a place of like I need to survive and I need to make sure that I, I continue to provide but I was working from a almost almost a place of like confidence because um, like I had certain things that I felt that led me to feel financially secure no pressure to my parents at all but I was just thinking like what if I did that for my little one and there was and something that would just allow her to to know no matter what you're going to be fine I don't know why I don't know why that conversation just made me think oh wait a second what if I, I can and even as I'm saying this and I think I, I hope you I don't know if you could if you if you've been here a while I, I what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, if you've been here a while, or if you know me, you know that I'm, I'm always thinking about financial security and that's a goal of mine. So even as I'm saying like, I was not here trying to build generational wealth, like you figure out your life, kid, for yourself, okay? You'll, you'll be fine. Even as I'm saying all this, it's not like I'd be like, ha, sorry, this is all mine. Go suffer at the corner. You figure it out. I wouldn't, it, that wouldn't be, that would never be me. That would never be me. Um, but what I'm saying is I, I've, I've, I've also not been intentional about building it for future generations. I've just been thinking about like, how do I make sure that we are secure in our lifetime, not necessarily lifetimes to come. But now listening to that, I just started to feel like, wait, what if there's something there that, that I could be doing that would help? Like, even great-grandchildren I may never meet, you know? Like, what if I could do something today that might help future, like, you know, these future little uh, babies that were, well, scientifically speaking, already in me from the moment that I came out of my mama's belly. I don't know enough about science or biology to be like, these are the eggs and the eggs and the eggs. But you know what I mean. Like, the eggs of the eggs of the eggs are already, like, in my eggs. <laughs> this, is, this is strong, strong science stuff here. This is what you come from. <laughs> anyway, I would love to know what you think. Um, are you of the mind, uh, mind frame that, yes, you should be building for your children's children and everything you're doing now is so that you could provide and, and it's really about like, you know, you, you almost deprive yourself so that future generations could have are you of the mindset of each man for themselves? Honey, as soon as you're out of uni, it's on you. Are you of the mindset of, I don't know. I don't know what even different variations, but I, I wasn't on any one extreme. I just knew my focus is on my lifetime and what I can do to make things as comfortable as possible for myself and for my little one, not necessarily for like future, future, you know. Mundias. Um, yeah, anyway, so 
what other conversations I kind of want to redirect um, I want to redirect our conversations with my financial advisor to kind of understand like like what are your thoughts what are you thinking what are you thinking rather um, it, yeah like just to kind of hear someone else's perspective because now for the first time I am thinking just what can I do what can I do anyway so those are the two meetings I'm going to finish off my makeup and then <laughs> leave the house guys I did not think it would be nearly what time did I leave my house 12 hours later is when I pick up my camera again to speak to you I <laughs> I almost feel like I want to look in the mirror to be like, what are you guys actually looking at? Because I must be all sorts of everything. But there's so much I want to share about today. But I am getting ready for, actually not even for bed, but for a session with my life coach today. And I even like wrote her and said, you might find me in my pajamas because uh, it's just been one of those days. So I'm going to just like get ready for bed and then you know we'll have our session whilst I'm in my pajamas which she was like yeah are you kidding and absolutely like whatever makes you feel the most comfortable but um I thought I would give you at least an update on this what I'm dying to give you an update on is like money and and like general generational wealth and just have that discussion but I want to have it properly let me get a hair tie oh okay all right, I'm gonna start this process. I even started and then I was like, wait a second, let me at least have like the quickest um, sum up of my session with Dr. Hashim. So first of all, I will 100% link him down below. Once again, I know I did with my last video. This, in case it wasn't obvious, like there's no, it's not a paid for ad. Like I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I was gonna say I have, a happy paying customer but if insurance paid but I paid for insurance so like I guess I paid for it but, but I'm, I'm I went there as like a as a patient a paying patient at least to insurance I pay um and I just want to say I like I, I would highly recommend him I got a comment actually on my video about him or did I get a couple I can't remember but there's one this evening I saw um and even sent him a screenshot and he was like hi so if you know who you are and you were like id i sent him I sent him a screenshot and he said hi back to you and um also got another screen um sent him another screenshot of someone on instagram just being like yeah that's the guy i go to 100 percent would recommend so if you're looking for a dermatologist i would recommend the other thing that i know i did mention the last time so because of where this cyst is on me booby gravity and the way my breast falls means that even when I had the stitches I had to like be really careful about like the support I had uh, he actually recommended that I stay in sports bras just so that there's no stretching of the 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 wound and it can just heal as well and easily um, without being stressed as possible he also said that he he was like why why did they cut it like that why did they cut it horizontally instead of vertically because you know that's the way kind of like how your skin falls so it, you kind of just why not just work with gravity and he gave the example of if it was on your thigh he wouldn't cut it across he would cut it going down just so that it it, it heals better works better you know what i mean so even that he was like oh, so when he was trying to solve it, he was he was thinking, ideally what he'd have done is cut it this way, but he didn't want to give me now a cross. But as you can tell, the stitches are out. I have this like little polka dot situation from where the stitches were. The easiest thing, I've never had stitches before, so I didn't know what to expect when it, when it came to taking them out. So easy, no pain. In fact, when she finished, I was like, okay, I'm ready now. <laughs> she was like, what? Uh, what? I, I removed them. I didn't understand what she was doing, but I literally said, okay, I'm, I'm ready. And she was like, we're done. So that was like non-factor. He did say that there is some scar tissue there. And that may mean that it's not like a perfect, or almost like non-existent scar. It's going to be there, which is, I don't know if you can see, but it's the bump towards the end here. 
Um, but I have three creams to go to, to put on. The first, I think, is to help with scarring. The second is the antibiotic, which I'll only use for a week. Um, and then for the next three weeks, I'm actually using a CeraVe product, which is so crazy because as soon as I got home, I got an invitation from CeraVe and I was like, are you guys, where are you, are you guys? Pardon the interruption. I think there are fireworks somewhere. I don't know if, if you're watching this from another country, do you guys <laughs> randomly have fireworks? The way it seems like I, in this video, in the last, in the last month, I've had fireworks twice now. This is the second time. I don't know if that's normal in other parts of the world or I don't know, but someone somewhere has fireworks. So that was the interruption. But I was saying I got an invitation from Sarah V, like for an event that they have. And I was like, are you, are you following me? What are you doing? This is odd. How did you know? So this is to just kind of add as much moisture as possible. Also, I can't see without my glasses. I really like it's a blur. <sighs> so much better. It's scary how much better that is. Like here, I can't. See if I have eyeshadow, I can't, actually I can't even see my um, scar. I just, it's so, oh my God. Do you think I should get, now that we're doing things, do you think I should get like uh, laser eye surgery? Like I wonder what that would be like. I wonder what that means. Because that is, it's, I was just feeling uncomfortable that unless I do this, I can't quite tell if it's focused, if everything is a blur, because everything is a blur. <laughs> anyway, had to leave to see said fireworks. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've got my treatments and I get to see him in a month's time to go back to Dr. Hashim. And he felt positive that it's doing, it's healing well um, and he's happy with what it looks like. And frankly, I'm happy with what it looks like. And I think once I'm past this process and I have like, a final result I might give you guys like images of everything because I have a folder on my phone where I've been saving like back from you know that mound I told you I had right after Morocco I have a picture of what that looks like um, to and the different post, uh, stages of healing um, yeah so I I will bid you farewell now because I have to wash my makeup off, do my little routine and get ready for my session with Ambreen because there's so much to delve into. I ironically, like one of the things we'll touch on today is money and I've had like a really long session with my financial advisor and I can't wait to kind of just like share some of the gems that he dropped with you and I just feel really excited because I just, I finally feel like I'm headed in the right direction. Hello you guys. It is much later the next day from the last clip that you watched. I actually wasn't sure if I wanted to pick up the camera today. I just kind of woke up feeling a little funny. I just did some uh, work on my computer, sent out emails, and um, then went to platform at Two Rivers because I was on the hunt for jeans. Mondi, who I saw a couple days ago, uh, said how she got herself some good jeans from platform and she was like, ah, oh, you know I, I don't know if I saw many options, but I don't know. I, I'm not sure and I thought let me just try it because I have an event this weekend and the theme is white and blue and I was like If I could get some really nice like straight leg jeans, that would be amazing Didn't get straight leg jeans, but I got myself some wide leg jeans and I'm really excited about that um, If you don't know they have uh, like old season like old old season uh, items from mostly Zara from what at least I saw so those jeans are Zara and they don't fit perfectly at the top but it's just I'm gonna have to just I'm gonna have to find a tailor who can just get the fitting right up at the top but it was lovely um, and then afterwards I took Mondi to Orca Decor she had never been to Orca Decor and when we walked in it was the same feeling I had which is like yeah cool couches yeah yeah Ooh, that's expensive but looks good okay let's go and then you walk in and you get to the aisles where they have everything from like graters to plates to organization bins to to dining plates and, and mats and sh salt shakers and oh, she was losing it in the best way oh, 
so so good um but really and truly like i just i'm i really enjoy walking through that shop and yeah i just <laughs> I just really like it even though I go and I'm like I want everything so don't take anything and then I end up like today I left with like a, a, a like a grater like the hand one and um, these cups let me actually show you I just got um, one cup so this is like plastic um, some kind of plastic but feels like sturdy this and a little plate and a little bowl because I just thought like for kids it's a cute option and I, and I didn't want to get like a full-on set but one just to test the waters and uh, what else did I get from there oh I actually even forgot about them and then I looked to the side and I was like that's what else I got these mini um, like a mini sh shovel and a mini rake and honestly I'm just trying to make gardening as exciting for my little one as it is for me and I was like here you go which now that I actually think about it because my houseplants are really small and the tools I got from Amazon are more like if you've got a kitchen garden this is actually the perfect size for this I actually thought I don't know I might actually gift a friend this I think this is actually something that would be useful if you don't want to get your nails dirty and you're maybe trying to you know just move soil around to test it out to see if it's if your plants need watering but this was like 350 shillings i think for the for the set so just like cute little thing they just they have everything let me put these back also i should say when we were testing can I, why is that dog going crazy when when we were testing out those tools um i found the biggest worm like it's like an actual earthworm in that pot and I was like but how and like you're what um and I, we tried to find it again <laughs> and we couldn't so it's found its way there and I just feel good about it I hope it doesn't do anything besides like aerate the soil and whatever earthworms do to soil that's amazing I hope it doesn't actually do anything to the plant but I was like wildly impressed that like it's acting like it's out in an actual garden, but it's here and um, yeah, I was, <laughs> side note. Anyway, I wanted to um, talk to you guys about just, I kind of just wanted to pass on that feeling of encouragement and passion and excitement that I had after my session with my financial advisor and also I guess just share some of the tips that he shared with me and maybe I should actually bring my notebook <laughs> okay all right let's talk money ma management money management you know what if you are at the stage in your life where you're thinking seriously about your child's future education investments and and you've been able to accumulate like you know some some money and you're trying to figure out how best to just secure your child's future education your future your pension whatever it is and you would like someone to help you through this i will give i will put down an email in the description box for you again i just want to repeat it's for people who are at the stage of their life where they're thinking school fees is a lot i need to see how to make this sum that i've kind of saved up work for me so if you've got that in mind and that's what you're focused on and and you've actually been able to accumulate some savings that you're not sure what to do with um and something that you're like I, this this money could go a long way i don't know where to start but i need help i'm going to link an email in the description box for you guys and hopefully um this person would be able to help you he's part of the moran um like investment and, and wealth management team um under alex so first question i kind of touched on was the one about um generational wealth and i shared how you know i don't particularly feel any pressure to be like i must leave you this crazy inheritance but i have been thinking about like well what can i do that might make my daughter and my grand children's lives a little bit easier like just future generations like the mundia 
generation you know so even like if i ever have like nieces and nephews how what can i do that might might help in whatever tiny tiny way and what could i start thinking about now is it important is it worth and he was it was a hard straight yes yes and he even was like he even quoted a verse in the in the bible um that was around inheritance and that being your duty and something like that i don't know i'm not entirely sure i'm not the most religious person but he he was adamant like if you can yes and he even like grew drew this graph of how wealth sometimes moves from one generation to the next and if you started out here at the bottom uh and you kind of you know help build and amass wealth to here then you'll find either the next generation or a couple generations later they'll probably lose it and then again they build it and then again lose it and then they build it and it's really about equipping these future generations to know how to handle this wealth to know how to handle this responsibility to be to not enable them into a sense of complacency but really equip them with the know-how the tools the right partners just that's what they need because i realized my my biggest hesitation lies around like oh the thing i can't stand like a brat like thinking about a 40 50 year old person who's just like i don't need to do anything because i'm like just like Ugh, i don't need to like my life is so like that i can't, i don't know if it, like few things frustrate me i find that incredibly unattra unattractive and um i just i yeah I, I don't know um someone who doesn't have a passion or something kind of moving them or that they're not moving towards something i i, I really struggle with that and I, my hesitation was like what if i build someone up to think like like they don't need to ever lift a finger ever that they could just spend their lives being spoiled brats and he he just broke it down like but why like nothing you're doing now is building that kind of person and and there are things that you could also start to do and maybe even change about your approach to parenting about um their access to certain privileges that might help them understand the relation between um uh you know uh, pr productivity or hard work or passion or skill sets or you know harnessing that and a great life like beautiful living like you could start to do that now so that at no point you have what you've just described because no one wants that i don't think there's any you don't I, I, you just want someone who adds value to at least i do i know that that's that's something that's important to me someone who adds value and you feel like the the world is a little bit better because of them people are a little bit happier because of them and not the other side of things because it's like oh i don't know <laughs> not for me so he was like yeah you absolutely like that should be part of what you are i mean like not should be but he did feel strongly like it's a good thing but also why yeah go for it that was him encouraging me like absolutely and if it's something that's been at the back of your mind go for it i again I can't wait to see the comments and see what people think and if i was just like the anomaly and everyone else was like what are you talking about of course we're trying to build like inheritance and wealth that we can leave on to future generations or if people are like who i'm never buying a house i'm spending the rest of my life my money on a cruise ship seeing the world on a yacht in dubai <laughs> in a thong so <laughs> can't wait to see what you guys say and then what was the other thing yeah ge yeah generation generational wealth is a blessing and i realized even for me given just the way that my parents brought me up i even, you know if i knew i had um just i don't know like a few million dollars lying somewhere i don't think it would make me any less ambitious or excited about life or passionate um, and it's because of how they brought me up and i think that's what really matters just to raise people who just know the value of money and aren't um spoiled brats um and then oh and then the other thing that I, I think i left just feeling really inspired about and and he shifted my perspective on this is i think i've been feeling a pressure to 
and not a pressure but it's also like a need like i'm at the stage where i'm ready for a new car like i'm i'm just like over it i i, I i'm over my car i've had it for nine years and i was um going in there to just touch base with him like this is my thinking around this and this is how soon i want to get it and um yes no and thank goodness thank goodness for this just for someone to kind of help bring your head back from like the clouds and just like really create a structure around this because it became so clear that it's it's if i want these other things if i want the kind of financial security that i'm i'm striving and working towards for myself for my daughter if i want um to kind of like what what am i trying to prioritize like these like investments or or is it like a new car right now like right right now and he just brought he brought me back down to to earth and, and not maybe that's not even the the correct way of of um portraying portraying that conversation it was just really about really painting a clear picture of what's on the table and it's like well do you want this or do you want this and do you have enough resources to just like do everything no well choose what's more important to you and it became abundantly clear that it's about waiting and honestly like the kind of person i am i i do i do like like if i if i want something i want to get it and i want to know and i want to just like ah, get it now but at the same time i'm also someone who values who values and treasures hard work and i don't mind a little bit of like grinding and, and like grit and just trying to like I really want this I will do whatever it takes and if it just means like my timelines are a little bit longer because I have other things that I prioritize then that's okay too and I'm so grateful that he put that into perspective because my timelines were like three months and given everything else that I I want and the and and that specifically being like just certain like just financial security like getting a car in the next few months would have completely thrown um, thrown everything off so I just I just left there feeling so grateful that there's someone who can help paint a really clear picture um, besides just the excitement of things right because sometimes that can really take over like I just I really I've seen this I don't know new couch or I've seen this new car in my case or I've seen this um, new laptop and I need to get it because I like I really want it but at the same time you could also wait a little bit longer if there's something else that is more important to you and more meaningful that you would be proud of like future you would be proud of for prioritizing it was just the messaging i needed because i think i do feel that a lot of the messages i've been consuming are, are probably about like you know live your best life today and enjoy now and like why wait for tomorrow and i think that had had led me to kind of forget i yeah that's good and i'm working towards that and in many ways i do experience that many ways but i don't that doesn't have to mean throw out your goals and your plans because live your life now <laughs> you know what i mean so i just i found that really like just really grounding for me really centering to kind of have that um and then oddly enough last night after that whole day, I had a session with my life coach and one of the things we touched on was money and money values and she gave me homework to do and some of the questions, not really homework, but you know what I mean, like I have to kind of think through uh, these questions, but let me just read out some of the things that I'm going to sit with. This is um, this is Ambreen, I've talked, to, I've talked about her here multiple times, um, but I will also still link her website down, down below um, what does money mean to me how comfortable am I with money how much money is inside or outside my comfort zone uh, my dream is I'd love to teach my daughter and there's like lots of these prompts and it I guess it'll just allow me to sit and really define where my money ethos or values or principles come from because even when she asked me, I was really honest and I realized that a lot of my ideas and beliefs around money are centered around like scarcity and a lack of and a fear of 
what's gonna happen when I don't have enough, uh, you know? And that could either lead me to like being like incredibly, just like not allowing myself to live in the moment and enjoy and, and enjoy today. But it can also drive me to the other side of like, well, what's the point? It's like, I don't know when it will come. So just like, ah, I don't know what to do. And then I end up being reckless. It's so weird. It's so weird. But yeah, so those are the things that I'm, some of the things, I just read out some of the prompts that she shared uh, that I'm going to, I guess, sit with and just, you know, see where that takes me. But I just, I think yesterday was, um, was a really, was a really eye-opening day for me. And I just, I just left that office and it never went to bed thinking that I am ready to change my perception and my relationship with money. I'm ready to to prioritize like my true goals, the things that I know that I've that have always mattered. But I'm also working towards the things that I want. Like this new car that I've just been thinking about the last couple of months and I thought like any day now. <laughs> and now I'm like Wait a wait a second. Um, pause. We might that we need to like that timeline needs to stretch a lot more. Um, but in the meantime, doing this under the water, like on top we're gliding, but underneath it's like, yeah 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 yeah. I've got it. I've got it. I'm moving forward. I'm doing it. Um, I even ended up sharing his contacts with uh, with a friend of mine, and I might actually do it with another friend of mine too, just because. Um, of a number of investment opportunities that he shared that I thought are worth like considering and um, yeah so yeah if you're if you're also looking at things like that and thinking about like you know how best to just make sure your children's future are secured and I guess I, I think of kids because I've, I've got a child but even if what you're thinking of is just your future your future you don't have to have anyone under your responsibility but if you have um some yeah some if you have any interests around investments and you you're really looking to like go for some interesting or cool opportunities i will leave benson's email in the description box i believe it's benson anyway you'll see it in the description box ah <sighs> this now that i've uh talked for a full 21 minutes but it's about a topic i like so i don't care i don't care and to all those people who are like oh my god all she does is sit and talk for like ever sorry <laughs> but not sorry because it, it matters it matters to me it, it's the kind of thing that excites me and i i just wanted to pass on just those two nuggets yes let's think about like wealth creation if we can leave something that would help future generations yes but also equip them with the tools so that they know how to manage that wealth and, and they are able to create value and build a beautiful life. And even if it's mostly about just beautiful living for them, that they're not reckless or acting like spoiled brats, that they, they there's a sweet balance there. And two, um, you, you don't have to enjoy the sweet foods today. You can, delayed gratification is okay too. And that's what I'm working towards now. Like, yeah. And if you, if you want to invest, I'll leave the link down below. Um, I'm pretty certain it's going to cut off any second now, but also just want to say to you that I'm excited because I think my wallpaper will be going up tomorrow. Is this vlog too long? I don't know. I don't know. It might end up being a super long vlog. We'll see. But I'm having someone come in. He's the person who actually had installed, also his name is Alex, ironically, but he installed, um, he mounted my TV and also mounted my uh, dad's TV. I got him a TV for his 60th birthday. And, um, and I want him to come and put up some things in the guest room, just a couple of like touches that I've been thinking of but I haven't done anything. And when I was talking to him, I was like, do you, might you also do like, um, besides like mounting TVs and wall hangings and whatnot, do you do like wallpaper? And, and he was like, yeah. I was like, great because i've like i've got peel and stick wallpaper and if you could do it <laughs> yeah do it uh clearly i'm not the best diy kind of girl if it wasn't already obvious i will pay someone if i can who understands the job better than i do to do it so um yeah that's who's coming tomorrow and i'm so excited about that um so i'm gonna sign off and then i'll see you 
hopefully tomorrow afternoon um, to try and figure out the wallpaper situation in the bathroom. Hi you guys! I'm with my friend Marion. <laughs> so I've known Marion for um, years. We went to high school together. So since year eight till today, we, which is actually like 20 years. If you think about it, it's 20 years. And now we've got like babies and like things have changed. Yeah, so first and foremost, I, I will say, oh sorry, school drop-offs, that's right, because they're in the same school. But um, I, I will say that, um, I, I know I said yesterday how I'm going to continue with like the wallpaper conversation. I was telling Marion about how I'm wallpapering my bathroom. I think I wanna make that a separate video and I wanna finish this off talking about like money because that's something I'm so passionate about. And you know who else is so passionate about money? Me. And Actually, we always talk yeah. about money. We all, always, all our always, our like, money. yeah, and we don't There's have time. <laughs> we're gonna go, we're gonna go, we're gonna make 30 million by 30. <laughs> we're in the same. What? Yeah, we're gonna make 30 million by 30. We're like, yeah, we're gonna do it. I think we're 20, 27, maybe. Oh, oh yo, we were the so ambitious. ambitious. <laughs> but do you see why I vibe with Marion? Because anyone was just like 100%, 100% yes to that goal. Like you, we you never are. We never reached that anywhere in a book, yeah. but we we're like, yeah, we're gonna make it. We're I can't so believe I even imagine, forgot. I even imagine. forgot about that. What yeah. I do remember is I told my dad how, like, and I was early twenties, and I remember telling my dad, like, hundred percent, I'm gonna be a billionaire, Kenyan billionaire by thirties. And in my head, I was like, everyone else just hasn't figured it out, but I know, I know. Like, I, I've just done the math. It's easy. Oh. Can do it. Oh. I know. But um, mm. so so Mary and I, we don't. Well, we meet often because of school, like we'll like chat, but we don't sit down that often. No. But when we do sit down, it's like a major catch up and we always talk about money. At some point it's going to come in and we're really open. It'll be like, so what are you doing? Where have you invested? What, what's coming in from that? Like, and I treasure that. So honestly, Marion, I really appreciate it because I just, we obviously, because we're not taught to talk about no, money. No, no. Actually, I was going to say, it's actually because of a conversation I had with Sharon that um, Tim and I told our friends we want to know what we should be doing. Oh! Yeah, remember the last catch-up we did, I think, at Paleo, we're like, why don't we talk about how much we earn enough? And therefore, when someone else goes to ask for an opportunity, they ask for less because they never knew. You so much, I remember T said, we told them to all write down. <laughs> How much T is her husband. Yeah, because he wasn't obvious. And yeah. like with our friends, and they were like past the papers. That is. It was so weird because if you, I mean, it does change perception. But I think the journey was we had to fight that. We're like we're not. But it's not to change perception. Be like, well, she spent so much money and they earn yeah. so little or whatever. But it was to dispel yeah. the secrecy. Oh around, my gosh. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, that was the last catch up with us actually. This week's catch up, the action is a will. A will. The next yeah. time we meet, we have to have written a will yeah gotten a lawyer and, and like yeah, authorized and whatever it needs to be authorized yeah exactly that's it but um i wanted to see how already like i'm like yes share the will i wasn't sure i was going to say that but like oh. thank you for saying that <laughs> but um what would you say are like some money lessons that you've learned or like gems that you'd like to share and i also just want to preface this by saying marion is like you are several steps ahead because oh. marion's um, money relationship and um, ethos like her, her values around money are well it's it's the same in that like they've to both of us it's it's formed a big part of our lives but her approach to money has always come from a heavy savings perspective mm. can I see how you used to get 20 bob, 40 bob. Oh, 40. <laughs> guys She's I was going to the United States international USA you yeah and my dad used to give me 40 bob yeah and he's like this is for an emergency 40 bob per day per day yeah like if anything happens and his logic to be fair was you can walk to school because we lived relatively like yeah. 15 20 minutes away yeah and you can carry food from home yes but I was like if there's like a robbery or an emergency I'm gonna be like don't worry guys I have 40 bob. <laughs> 40 bob. We're sorted. But um, from that 40 bob, she would I save. save. I used to buy so, my clothes with it, yes. my lunch, yeah. go out. And, and from that savings, she carried that. Like if you're saving 40 bob from 40 bob, <laughs> from that, she carried that into, into work and everything. And in fact, the thing that she had to work on was learning how to spend Imagine. her money. Like so like married. she's, yeah, like she, it was like hard for her to like, get on that bandwagon because she was just like such a saver so like where you are in your investment portfolio and everything mm. is just like so inspiring to me um, and that's why I'm always like oh my god tell me everything what are you doing what are you buying what are you 
cake making, like all these things. Um, but anyway, what are some money? I just wanted to share about Marion so you understand why this is exciting. Uh, well, I think the things, let me say the things I've enjoyed. Yeah. So one, as Sean mentioned, I was a saver. Yeah. So getting married and in the family budget, putting a budget for, for personal spending. Okay. So I actually get a budget every month and the family doesn't allow me to return it and I'm not allowed to save it. Does that make sense? So like, my hubby says, if you don't spend it, then give it to me and I'll show you how to spend it. But the point was, I never used to buy myself clothes. I never used to like, take myself to do anything. Yeah, it's and it's very unhealthy to only save. Money yeah. doesn't exist for only saving. It exists for use, to create value in, in the world we live in. I think I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed that. I like how like the thing you've had to learn is how to spend Imagine. and how you're being forced <gasps> like to spend. The other day, someone is coming from the US and so she was like, they're willing to ship stuff from Amazon. For, I mean, for free, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't have anything to buy. Like, I went to and I was like, I don't have anything I want. <laughs> I think you guys know what my relationship with Amazon oh is like. God. That's very different. Yeah, but I bought for the kids a buttload of stuff anyway. Yeah. I think that's the first one is I think learning to spend. Yeah, so a the, good balance between spending and balance. saving is healthy. Don't glorify saving only. Yeah. You know? The second one, and I was saying about it, was I got life insurance. Or we got life mm. insurance. So key to note, I don't mean life insurance. So life insurance is the one where we pay 5K every day and then when you're 40 or like in 15 years, 20 years, you get a lump sum. Mm -hmm. This is the day I die, my children get something. Um, and I think it's because, you know, it's different, it's different working and always feeling like, what happens if I die? What's going to, and it's not a lot of money because we pay like, I pay about 5,000 bob every month. And then, yeah. um, my life is insured for 10 M and the same thing for my husband. Oh, isn't this how people like get attacked and, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless you're my kids, I don't know how it's yeah. going to continue. Yeah. Um, and then my hubby as well. And, and I also got a critical life cover. So if I get a critical illness, a cancer or an aneurysm or a stroke, equally, I get a, a 10 million payout. So that I don't work or wake up every day with a fear of, you know, yeah. this could destroy, disease could destroy my family, or if I die, what will happen to me? I mean, yeah. at least they have a small amount. I think that's the second thing. And how long is that hope for? Um, so I pay till I'm 80. Okay. If I die before I'm 80, I pay. If I reach 80, I stop paying and they still cover my life. Oh. Yeah, so whichever way oh. it goes, yeah. Okay. You know? Can, I, can um, I jump in and say mine is a little different because I pay till I'm 40, and then if I want to renew, it's a different conversation and premiums would be higher so i don't but I she don't gets know. a bigger lump sum I, but i get sure. a bigger lump sum for yeah right now but it's it's so it, and and the thinking there is because i don't have any like major assets that would be like the same amount as my as my life insurance coverage which is 40 million i i right now i'm hoping first of all for you i feel like you'd be so, so fine she'd be so fine so this is just extra extra that she's trying to put out there but um for her babies which is good which is good but um but i just wanted to say like mine only covers me till i'm 40 and if i do it again i'd have to like extend that and the premiums would be would be even higher because the older you are of course the more likely you are to not I mean, make yeah so if you're young now is the time to start now is the time and you've got kids yeah for sure and then i think the third thing which was sean and i were really discussing today was around um which i guess you'll talk about later or you have talked about is our generational mm. wealth or inheritance yes 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 it's so also how for me it's always been uh, i struggle with the idea of my kids waiting for me to die to get something yeah. and so i've always thought also do they deserve something i mean isn't it i don't know um but i was saying how for me it's always i like the idea of saving and then when they're a certain age giving them a lump sum to either start a business or be able to parent for years and figure things out or um whatever it is that they want to do in that space but then you did raise a good point which is you know when's the right time to do that and how because also when you're just finished uni i don't know if that yeah if that's when you feel money. like you're best equipped to Correct. to make yeah. astute financial yeah. decisions i don't know because what you would do with that money now versus when you were 18. Yeah. although marion at 18 would have <laughs> killed it let me tell you if your kids are marion just give them to them. Give them when they're 15. Guys. They're they fine. They're good. Actually, they're good. They're good. Maybe that's the logic. Maybe it's because you know your children. You're yeah. Like, because I think about, you know, how many of us could have explored and expressed careers, opportunities, ideas without the burden of paying rent and what it would have done for us. So even if later you fail after you and you're like, I'm going to go to work, the difference in the school of, school of life. School of life. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but also just Sean and I were just chatting about it and I need to go home and think about it. I was saying that around yeah. generational wealth yeah. and inheritance and what what role do we have to play? Um, and how do you like this oh I was gonna tell you there's a there's a story I was reading about a dad who whenever they go for a holiday or a trip or road trip, yeah, every stop he gives his kids a thousand bob and says, If you don't use a thousand bob, I'll double it at the next stop. But if you use a thousand bob to buy the slack, you use it in your dime. And yet a kid who by the time he was getting to like coastal had like ten K you know, because he never used any of the money. What? 
kids? How old is that kid? I think it was like they had a 10 year old, an 8 year old, and maybe like a 12 year old. Wow. But it's like interesting ways you can use everyday life to help your kids. Yeah, to, to, to exactly. Know? And that's what I was saying. So, like, it's, it, oh, who's, oh, God. <laughs> Someone was calling. I hope it hasn't interrupted anything. But I was just saying how, um, it, it also matters how you raise your children and what kind of values and principles, like what you're trying to instill in them about their relationship with money. It matters. These things that we're picking up as kids, like that's, you know, because Marion started out with a saving mentality it's as true. an adult, I mean, it's benefited you it's so, so, so much. But so I know easy. people who parents never discussed money. So when they started earning, it's suddenly like, oh, I can just do whatever. I can buy a new TV, a new car. Mm -hmm. And then there are moments that hit you that you're like, crap, I didn't plan for this and save for this and I have this emergency so you start to learn these things much later but it matters what what uh, principles your kids are getting from you and I think you've done such a good job oh, thank you. such an amazing oh, job Michelle is also just as a student I was saying how we <laughs> she was saying the way we talk about money we should be billionaires yeah. the amount of time we spend discussing it versus output yeah I know no, but I think it's actually maybe the output won't be that we'll be millionaires maybe we'll have a very healthy relationship a healthy really because we are trying to understand right. it and, and learning from each right. other and inspiring each other right. and I think we are the better for it and I think especially as women because this especially. isn't often like you know the idea of money and women it's like but don't let the men handle it mm, let the men handle don't it don't worry honey you'll have We've someone to take this. care of you yeah first of all that's, that's not me <laughs> that's a lie that's not you either but also bring, bring even you should bring that to the relationship yeah like, you're the one who's yeah. like mm -mm, i know my money money and, and this is what yeah sense. and whether you choose to work or not you have like you know what you're talking about and you know what you're saying and you're having these conversations and you're bringing up ideas too and i mean it benefits everyone but marion i feel like i've kept you for so long and it's i just okay, i'm just so happy that that we get to have this chat and kind of wrap up this vlog because i love talking i love i love talking about money and i think with you it's always just like it it's leaves me easy. feeling yeah it's, it's very easy it's always been very easy but it leaves me feeling very very inspired as well yes the next time you see us together just ask guys so will we did you figure out the will right? yeah will. yeah we owe baby. it to our to, to our children. babies yeah Alrighty, bye, bye honey, guys. and bye you guys, thank you for watching, I'll see you very soon, bye! <laughs>